was starting out, I did lots of small shows around town. I was lucky I had a really great teacher, Wanda Wayland, who took me under her wing. Wanda said, you know, I think I can teach you a skill that will serve you the rest of your life. And she taught me how to do props. So I found my niche with set design. I'm George Maxwell. I started at Pioneer Theater in 1974 as the property master. I was going to stay for five years, but I stayed for 45. And I retired from Pioneer Theater still as the property master. <laughs> I'm Lorraine Maxwell. I'm George's mother. As a young boy, he was very independent. He was the oldest in the family, so he had younger brothers and sisters. His senior year at Abraham Lincoln High School, he took a theater class, and he really enjoyed it. I got hooked on theater. It just fit my personality. He graduated and packed up his car. He and his father rode the 1,000 miles from Council Bluffs, Iowa, to Salt Lake. There, his dad returned to Iowa and then left him on his own. He went to Weaver College. There, he had a teacher, Wanda Whalen, that was in set and costume design, and she inspired him. One of my other teachers at Weaver State, David Barber, had taken a job with Pioneer Theater. He said, you know, they really need a prop master. Some of the buildings. So my teacher got me this job. I'll show you what that is. So this one was built so that you can actually show uh, the pieces. And the pieces all come out so you can actually uh, hand them around. So this is a great one to show to grade schools and, and uh, people that might be interested. And it's one that I actually did quite a bit of rendering stuff for. Uh, scenic designer. Um, basically is the architecture on stage. Uh, it is, it sets the, the period or the style uh, of the show um, in collaboration with the costume and lighting designer and the director. We all, nowadays, we all get together in the same room and meet in the old days. We used to do it over the phone. And George's legacy can really be uh, summed up in the individual productions that he did and his stamp upon each of them. He just has a creativity and a way of looking at design that is his own and yet completely serving of the piece. He really created that visual aesthetic of the theater for decades, which is well known, not simply in Salt Lake, but around the country by actors and directors and other designers who've seen the work there, seen pictures certainly, and always impressed by the scale and the beauty of those productions. His designs are always really epic in nature. He has kind of a maximalist design aesthetic where more is more, but it all comes together to be even something that's bigger than the whole. Something that you always would notice in George's work is a sense of scale and composition. George's design never ended with the stage level. It ended beyond the wings and beyond the fly loft. He's completely informed on what other productions of the show might have looked like, and then absolutely goes his own way. I spend tons of time at the library. I do a lot of research. Being asked to do the show is the really the only good part, and then after that, it's all downhill. <laughs> All of this is totally removable. So when you look at that set for uh, Sweeney Todd, this all came out 
and we built decking over it. So this was actually a giant hole that lighting was shooting up out of. It was, it was a fun project. George was like, yeah, we're going to cut a giant hole in the stage and it's going to be great. And we all looked at him like he had two heads. From, from We'd taken out the floor theory. and we put in giant gears into the floor that uh, rotated. And, uh, and then the set was kind of built around those gears. I learned very early, don't really tell him what to do. <laughs> I will also remember, George, that you were known, perhaps still are known, as being famously grumpy. Some people might say he's sort of grabby, which I think is part of a veneer he puts on. There's a real soft heart in there, actually a very sentimental heart and um, a dear heart, if I may say. He's actually the kindest person. I'm sorry, George, I'm ruining your crabby veneer. He has a sense of humor. It's kind of hard to find it, <laughs> but he does. Um, everyone thinks he's all bristly and grrr, but underneath that, he has a sense of humor and a sense of joy that obviously makes me smile. And the one thing that everybody, I think, knows about George, if you ever wanted to know what was really going on at the theater, want to know what was in everybody's mind, you went to George. And with a little flattery and maybe a couple of drinks, you'd know everything. And you could believe about 50% of it, too. I think the easy thing when you talk about a theater is to talk about leadership, and absolutely leadership is an important component in the longevity of an institution, but this institution would not exist if it weren't for George. I appreciate his being there to give more and more and do so much and being so committed to the organization. What he has done design-wise, mentorship, budget-wise, his thoughtful way of dealing with all things theater is part of what makes us still be here 60 years later. What a great uh, friend and mentor he's been for me. He is a friend who made this friend what we call friendly, friends who are family. He was a sounding board, he was an advisor, he was a supporter, he was a confidant, he was, he is, he still is those things. We're very proud of all the work that he did do, you know, and still are. I loved our collaborations. Who knows, maybe there'll be one more someday. I've always thought the world had George. Wow, really? <laughs> Congratulations, George. This is a well-deserved honor. All the best. <laughs>